Hello, my name is Rex Busterfield, and I'd like to welcome you to a video about my Quilcom New Accord. When I was reading up on the Hammond tone wheel generator organ system, I kept coming across references to a Nova Chord, which was an instrument that Hammond made in 1939, and I became progressively more fascinated with it, and I decided to have a go at making a quill conversion. The instrument was way ahead of its time, and it used 163 valves with a master oscillator divider system, an envelope generator, voltage controlled amplifier, etc., for each note. So it was fully polyphonic, and at the time it first came out, Robert Moog was six years old. For various reasons, it didn't have a very long lifespan, but it was used uh, by studios for early films and TV shows, um, most notably Gone with the Wind and uh, various sci-fi movies. If you'd like to learn more about the uh, original instrument, there's lots of info in my background info folder. So to give you um, an overview of the new accord, the top panel, the main panel, has controls which are representative of the controls on the original instrument. The second row of panels is what makes it a newer version. I provided a few extra facilities to extend the range whilst hopefully not deviating too far from the original concept. There are five filters provided and these can be mixed in with in the tone mixer and you also have the full tone level which uh, mixes in the dry signal. Deep tone is a bass boost, brilliance is a high frequency boost and then we have three resonators. The resonators are effectively formant filters with fixed frequencies and the output levels are set with the three amount knobs. So these can uh, provide um, quite a range of timbres, but in order to extend that possibility, I've made the resonator frequencies adjustable so you can set the formants as you wish. The original one had a switch to switch between uh, mellow and bright. I've called this knob tone and labelled it mellow. The balancer knob adjusts the uh, volume balance between the lower part and the upper part of the keyboard in terms of level without affecting the timbre and it centers around um, B3 which is the B below middle C so I'll play a chord and demonstrate that. <laughs> Thank you.
Because it doesn't use any filtering and it doesn't affect timbre, the effect is different to operate in the deep tone and brilliance to get the uh, balance you want in terms of timbre. In my view, one of the most remarkable uh, developments in 1939 is that the Nova Chord had an envelope generator which was basically a, an ADSR and this was so far ahead of its time. Um, the individual values weren't adjustable but you were given seven different envelopes that you could select from. Now, to uh, extend the range of possibilities, I've taken the liberty of making the attack, decay, sustain, and release times adjustable. So what happens is, if you set a preset on here, you can deviate uh, on the ADSR envelope, um, and those values will be saved with a song or in a preset. Um, but if you operate the preset knob, then those values will be overridden. The Nova Chord didn't use a sustain system that we're used to these days. So if you press the sustain pedal, what actually happened is it changed the short preset release time to up to about three seconds. So this is what happens when you have sustain pedal to release selected. If you want to use the more uh, familiar system, you can change this to sustain pedal to hold. The vibrato system that Hammond came up with is quite remarkable. It used six vibrating reeds, electromechanically vibrated, and these reeds influence the inductance of the coils in the master tone generator. So there were 12 master tones generated and six LFOs, and these LFOs, if you want to call them, were actually routed to chromatic pairs of the top octave generator. The wave shape um, was squarish on the earlier models and more triangular on later models. Now, because these vibrating uh, reeds weren't actually synchronised, they drifted in speed between each other. When you play chords, uh, you get a sort of chorus effect due to the different LFO rates. The vibration rates of the vibrato reeds were factory set and fixed at around 7 hertz. But I've taken the liberty of providing a speed control so that you have control over the vibrato speeds, which allows you to set a more natural sounding vibrato for um, string type sounds, for instance.
regular tuning panel I've provided, of course, is absolutely non-authentic, so you can adjust the basic tuning in semitones and fine. Fine might be useful if you want to use more than one instance, so you can detune them. And I've been a bit naughty and provided um, a pitch bend option. <laughs> So now I'll talk about the variation panel. In the factory, the Nova chords were very carefully calibrated. They use custom value components and some resistors, for instance, were actually chosen during manufacture to give um, an equal sort of sound across the whole keyboard range. Now, of course, you wouldn't expect this calibration to last very long, considering it uses valves which age and components which change in value. And this led to an, in, uh, an increase in the difference uh, between uh, notes across the keyboard. And personally, I think this, this actually sounds quite good and it's actually quite useful. So the range knob sets the amount of this variation, and if you turn it, to minimum then you have effectively a perfectly calibrated Nova chord or new chord. And if I turn this to maximum, which is quite extreme, you'll hear the difference between the notes in the scale. The table knob selects from up to 10 different pre-randomized uh, tables and I provided this so if you want to have more than one instance of the new accord you can set a different table so you'll get different uh, differences between the notes. If I play a chord you'll hear the effect of the different tables. Of course, that's rather extreme, so a setting of half or so is probably better. Now, the new Accord is a synthesizer based plugin. Um, as such, it uses single cycle waveforms, and I use my Qualcomm Wave Maker to simulate waveforms that I found in two different sources. One was from a restored, fully restored Nova chord, serial number 346, and the other one was from a Cherry Orchard modelled um, Nova chord demo. And interestingly, they sound quite different, so I've provided both options. For expression, the original Nova Chord had a swell pedal, and you can operate this uh, with your mouse. Or you can set any CC you want. For instance, I've got um, CC1 for the mod wheel set here. And I've added a velocity response for amplitude. Now you may say that's not authentic but in actual fact the original factory prototype had a sort of some sort of um, pressure or velocity sensitivity but this was removed due to the cost of the instrument. So you have velocity control on the new chord. When this is at uh, zero, there is no velocity response, but as you increase it, it becomes more sensitive to velocity. So that's my Quilcom New Accord, a somewhat modernized version of the original Hammond Nova Chord. Now I do accept that by modern standards this is a very limited synthesizer of course but uh, it gives you the opportunity to have a go on what 
is said to be, and I believe is, the first polyphonic synthesizer made in the 30s. So you can have a play with that and uh, see what you can get out of it, maybe. Um, so, until the next time, bye! <laughs>